It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 155, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Welcome back, happy Friday. This is where you can listen to some popular blogs covering health and fitness, read to you by me, but not on Fridays, because every Friday I do something else. I take your audio questions from oldpodcast.com, play them right here, and answer them for you on the show. Why bother sending your questions to me? Well, if you wanna hear my credentials, definitely check out one of the previous Q&A episodes. I won't go into all that here. Today's question actually piggybacks a little bit on last week's question about vitamins. As you'll soon hear, this question is about supplementing before a workout. Before we get to that, if you wanna be part of this show and also have a great chance to win books from us, ask a question. We give away a book to a random person who sent a question in every month as a bonus. Just listen through to the end of the episode to hear how to send in a question. For now though, Let's jump right in, hear today's question as we start optimizing your life. Hi, Dr. Neil. This is Kevin from Spokane, Washington. I'm a huge fan of the show and I had some questions on pre-workout supplement. First, would you advocate taking a pre-workout supplement? And if so, is there one out there that you recommend that is safe to take? And I also had a question on rotating off of pre-workout supplement. Is it something I should be rotating out of every week or every month? As you've said before in your podcasts, there's a lot of theories out there about it. Anyways, thanks. I seriously appreciate it. I appreciate the question, Kevin. I just happened to be reading a publication addressing supplementation and its effectiveness on performance and muscle growth just the other day. Now, I'm going to start by reminding all of my listeners that I am not sponsored by any food or supplement manufacturer. My goal, as always, is to tell you the truth to the best of my knowledge. More often than not, my information comes from published research studies. By doing this, I'm hoping that what I report to you is minimally biased. This is because when we rely on other people's experiences with supplements or meal plans or workout routines, there's a really high chance that what they're doing may not work for you at all. This is why we need well-designed studies so we can try and figure out if these supplements, for example, work for most people. Also, please know that each supplement manufacturer is different. Some follow very strict quality and purity standards, others don't, and I mentioned this last week. So, before you buy a supplement, it's best to research the manufacturer first. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get to it. As far as pre-workout supplements, I'm not aware of any that are effective immediately before a workout. Instead, two of the best things you can do before your workout are number one, consider drinking one cup of black coffee or plain tea about one hour before your workout, and two, hydrate. When it comes to pre-workout fueling, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends consuming mostly carbohydrate-rich foods. Now, you do want to avoid those that are high in fiber and high in fat. This is because both fiber and fat will slow the digestion of these foods, which may affect your workout. So as far as pre-workout supplements, there really aren't any out there. Rather, if you follow those tips, you're going to be right on track. Now, after your workout, I know you didn't ask about this, Kevin, but I'm going to go there anyways, especially after strength training, 20 grams of leucine-rich proteins is often recommended. Leucine-rich proteins basically come from animals. These are animal-based proteins. Now, how much is 20 grams of protein? Well, three ounces of chicken would contain about 27 grams of protein, and three ounces isn't much. It's about the size of a deck of cards. Now, since you asked about supplements, I figured I should talk about some of them. There are supplements that have been around longer than others, and this usually means that there are more data to help determine whether these supplements are safe and effective. Now, of course, I won't be able to discuss every single one, but just the ones that are more popular, beginning with creatine. Creatine, also known as creatine monohydrate, has been around a while and has been found to improve performance and muscle gains for most healthy adults. As far as whether it will help pre versus post-workout, don't know. Our bodies actually make creatine naturally, but researchers have found that in those who are active, and especially those folks that lift weights, extra creatine may help. There are some side effects with its use though. I don't usually recommend creatine to those with a history or a family history of kidney disease. This is because it may lead to the body retaining more water and the kidneys are in charge of helping the body get rid of not only water, 
but any extra creatine too. If you do use it, you'll need to pay attention to the dosing indicated on the packaging. Each creatine manufacturer is a little bit different in their dosage. And yes, it is good to cycle on and off of creatine, but I can't provide any specifics without knowing the dosages. Before you run out and buy creatine supplements, I must quote the International Society for Sports Nutrition. Quote, the same result of improved performance can be achieved with the ingestion of sufficient carbohydrates and high biological value protein, end quote. So it may not be necessary to use creatine at all. Next, beta alanine. This is a protein and one of its main jobs is to reduce lactic acid buildup. Think about the last time you sprinted really hard. Did the muscles in your legs start to burn? That's caused by the buildup of lactic acid. Our bodies produce lactic acid normally when we're performing very high-intensity movements. Most of us can't wait to stop and take a rest when we feel our muscles burn like that. So the thinking is, by supplementing with beta-alanine, you'll get less of this lactic acid buildup, meaning your muscles won't feel like they're on fire, which will allow you to work out these high intensities for longer. Unfortunately, there are conflicting data on whether beta-alanine actually works. So at this time, there's simply not enough information to know whether supplementing with beta-alanine is safe or effective in the short or long term. So I would say save your money on this one. Moving on to glutamine. Glutamine is also a protein. What's unique about it though, is our bodies can actually make glutamine on their own. So we actually don't need to get this protein from our diets. Okay, so why would anyone wanna supplement with it then? Well, glutamine is interesting because when the body is undergoing extreme stress or has gone through some trauma, we can't make enough of it to heal ourselves. So under those specific conditions, we may need to supplement with it. Some have argued, well, I trained so hard and I'm so sore afterwards, doesn't that count as extreme stress for the body? What about all that muscle breakdown? Doesn't that count as trauma? Technically, sure. But what we're finding from research studies is that while safe to take as a supplement, extra glutamine doesn't help improve performance or improve immune functioning. So basically this means it won't help the body heal any faster. And lastly, whey protein. Whey is one of the proteins found in milk, the other is casein. So yes, if you drink milk or consume any products made from milk, you're consuming some whey protein. What's frustrating about whey protein is that we simply don't know if it's helpful or not. From what I've seen, whey protein supplements is most helpful for those that are over the age of 60 and participate in a regular strength training program. For everybody else, it's probably unnecessary. So here's my take on sports supplements. Most do not appear to help in reality. The quality of supplement is very important. Do your research before buying. Again, I recommend the website consumerlab.com. They're an independent organization. They test for quality and purity of many of the popular supplements on the market. Also, What we need to think about is when we do look at these studies, we should keep in mind that they've been performed when comparing protein supplements against other protein supplements. We really need more research comparing protein supplements with real food to see if eating more nutritious food would lead to the same or even better results, and we simply don't have that data yet. Lastly, I will end my response to you with a quote from a research article written by experts in the field of sports medicine. Quote, although most supplements may be considered as safe when taken at the recommended doses, athletes should be aware of the potential risks linked to the consumption of supplements. In addition to the risks linked to overdosage and cross effects when combining different supplements at the same time, inadvertent or deliberate contamination with stimulants, estrogenic compounds, diuretics, or anabolic agents may occur, end quote. Basically then, as I mentioned, we simply can't guarantee the safety or effectiveness of this stuff. Thank you again for your question, Kevin. You're gonna be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you wanna be on this show and have a really good chance to win free books, come by oldpodcast.com to submit your question. Just look for the red bar along the side or call 61 I love ohd Just make sure you get your question in before the end of the month so that you're in a raffle to win a book from us. As always, thank you all for the support so far. Thank you for sending in your questions. Keep them coming. And we'll be back on Monday where your optimal life 
awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.